area of triangles. The area of each right triangle in the diagram below is clearly equal to one half the base times the height because it's half the area of the rectangle whose length is B and whose width is H. So therefore the area of each right triangle is one half base times height. What would happen if we were looking for the area of any scalene triangle? Well, let's find out. If we have this arbitrary scalene triangle ABC with a base of B and a height of H, we need to keep in mind that the height is always measured perpendicular to the base that's opposite of a vertex. So we labeled the base here as BC, so the height has to be perpendicular to the base and across from our angle B. To determine the general area formula for triangle ABC, let's actually draw in a right triangle, triangle ADC, such that this new triangle plus the original will form a bigger triangle ADB. So we know that triangle ADC has a base of B prime and its height is H, and we know that triangle ADB has a base of B plus B prime, or B prime plus B, and a height of H. Using the area formula for right triangles, which is one half base times height, we can determine that the area for triangle ADC, the smaller one, is one half B prime times H, and the area of the biggest triangle, triangle ADB, is one half B prime plus B times H. Now, what are we gonna do with these two triangles in order to get the area of triangle ABC? We're actually gonna to have to subtract them. So if you take the area of the big triangle and subtract the area of the smaller triangle, you're gonna get the area of the other smaller triangle. So we're gonna have an equation that looks like this. And now let's substitute our area formulas into both of these positions. And when we do that, we will get one half times B prime plus B, close parenthesis, times H, plus one half B prime H. Now we're gonna distribute both the one half and the H to both terms in this set of parentheses. And when I do so, I'm gonna get one half B prime times H plus one half BH. And then I have this minus one half B prime H from triangle ADC at the end. And if you notice, we're going to actually have two terms here. We have negative one half B prime H and positive one half B prime H. Well, these guys end up canceling each other out. So therefore, our final area of triangle ABC is one half base times height. Therefore, the area of any triangle, not just right triangles, is given to be one half base times height. Now we just found out that the formula for area of any triangle is always the same, one half base times height. But when triangles are not right triangles, the height isn't usually given to us. So instead, you may have to determine the, the height based on the sides that are given to us. So in this case, how would you find the height of this triangle and then find the area? Take a moment to think about it, uh, pause the video while you think, and then when you're ready for the answer, you can unpause it. In order to determine the area of any triangle, we can actually draw an altitude from any vertex to the base across from it and create a right triangle or two in there. Um, in our case, we went from A and drew an altitude straight down across from side BC, and we created a new bigger triangle, triangle ABD. It has the same height as our original triangle ABC. Notice that both of these triangles, triangle ABC and triangle ABD, both share this common side of AB and the angle at B. So given this angle and side AB, and we're looking for the height, which trig ratio do you think would allow for us to find that value? Take a moment to pause this video and think about it, and when you're done, unpause it.
And notice that H is the side directly opposite or across from angle B. So therefore H is our opposite side and 8 is our hypotenuse of the tr right triangle, triangle ABD. Therefore, I'm going to end up using the sine ratio. So sine of B is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. We found on the last slide that the sine ratio is the easiest one that we can use to find the height of this triangle and sine of any angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse and if we cross multiply we would get the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle will equal the height and if we plug in our values for this problem again we have angle B here height was the opposite and 8 was the hypotenuse we would have that the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of our angle. So the opposite side is H, which is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 8, times the sine of our angle 40. And if we evaluate the sine of 40 to the nearest hundredths place, we end up getting 0 0.64. And if we multiply that by 8, we end up getting that the height is 5.1 units. And now that we have the base and we have the height of our triangle, can we now find the area? And if so, how? Take a moment to pause this video to determine that answer. And when you're done, you can unpause it. What we can actually do with that height value, which we found to be 8 sine of 40, is substitute that into our area formula for H. And we also already know that the base is 4. So when I substitute all these values in, I get that the area is 1 half, base is 4, height is 8, sine of 40. And now when I multiply all these values together, again, sine of 40 was 0 0.64. And when I multiply them, I end up getting that the area is 10.24 square units. When we examine our solution, we can see that the area of any triangle is given to be half of the product of two sides, multiplied by the sine of the angle that's in between them or the included angle. So in this case, in this case, our sides were four and eight and the angle in between or included had an angle measurement of 40. And our formula became one half four times eight times the sine of 40. And then again, this is it evaluated as decimals and it gave us our final answer of 10.24 square units. If we replace the numbers by labeling the angles with uppercase letters and the sides that are across from them by lowercase letters that match, we end up getting this formula for the area. We have the area of the triangle could be one half A times C times the sine of B, which is the included angle. But there's also nothing special about those sides or that angle. So you could also rewrite this area formula as one half A times B times the sine of the included angle C. Or it could also be one half B, lowercase b, times lowercase c times the sine of angle A. So the area of the, any triangle is equal to the product of any two sides of it and the sine of the included angle. Let's try another example. Find the area of triangle ABC. In this case, our altitude is going to be drawn inside of the triangle. Since we know that the area of any triangle is 1 half base times height, we can draw our height into our triangle and label it as H. And we're given the measurement of angle C as 50 degrees. So the height of this triangle is actually the opposite side in relation to the 50 degree angle that's given to us in the smaller right triangle. And four is the hypotenuse of that smaller right hand triangle. 
So we're going to end up using sine to determine the height. So the sine of 50 is equal to h over 4. So therefore, the height is equal to 4 times the sine of 50 degrees. And then if we substitute this into our area of a triangle formula, our area will become 1 half, our base is 9, and our height is 4 times the sine of 50 degrees. We could have also noticed that the 50 degrees is the included angle between sides AC, or lowercase b, and side BC, or a lowercase letter A. So then we could have also known that we would have had that the area of this triangle was one half A times B times the sine of angle C. Either way, we still get the same area formula. And when we evaluate this in a calculator, we end up getting 1 divided by 2 times 9 times 4 times the sine of 50 degrees. And when we press equals, we end up getting 13.788. Uh, and we're going to round that up to 79 square units. And that's the area of this triangle. This slide also explains how we end up getting the height by drawing it in. It's the opposite side and we're given the hypotenuse is 4. So the sine of 50 is equal to h over 4. Therefore the height is 4 times the sine of 50. And when we substitute it into 1 half base times height, we also get 1 half 9 times 4 times the sine of 50 which again does give us a value of 13.79 square units. What would happen if none of the angles of a triangle are given to us? Could we actually calculate the area when we're only provided with the lengths of the three sides? Take a moment to pause this video and think about it, and when you're done you can unpause it and you'll find the answer. We actually can find the area of any triangle when only given the lengths of three sides, thanks to Heron of Alexandria in about 60 AD. He was a mathematician and engineer from Alexandria, Egypt, and he discovered the formula that the area of any triangle is equal to S times the quantity S minus A times the quantity S minus B times the quantity S minus C, where S is the semi-perimeter or half perimeter of the triangle. And S is calculated by finding the sum of all three of our sides and dividing it by two. Now the question is, where did this area formula come from? Let's actually find out. We've already found out that the area of any triangle is one half base times height. And that can be rewritten as the product of any two sides and the sine of the included angle. If we elect to use sides A and B, and the included angle C, our formula would become 1 half times A times B times the sine of angle C. If we apply the law of cosines and the Pythagorean identity, sine squared C plus cosine squared C equals 1, we can derive Heron's area formula. Let's begin by solving the Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, for sine squared of C. First we have our initial identity. If we subtract cosine to both sides, we get sine squared of c is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. And then we can factor 1 minus cosine squared c into 1 plus cosine c times 1 minus cosine c. One version of the law of cosine states that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of angle c. Let's actually solve this equation for cosine of c and then use that with the last equation that we found. 
So we start off with c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. I can subtract a squared and b squared to both sides of the equation, and I get that c squared minus a squared minus b squared is equal to negative 2ab cosine of c. And then if I divide both sides by negative 2ab, this is what shows. And then I can distribute the negative to all the terms in the top to rewrite it as negative c squared plus a squared plus b squared, and then I can rearrange these to show that the cosine of c is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared, all divided by 2ab. Now that we've solved for cosine of c, we can substitute this expression into our sine squared equation for that value of cosine of c, and then solve it for sine. So we have so far that sine squared of c is equal to 1 plus cosine of c times 1 minus cosine of c. If I take this expression and substitute it in for cosine of c in both places, I end up getting that sine squared of c is equal to 1 plus the quantity a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab, and then I have 1 minus again the quantity a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab and then in order to get a common denominator I have to replace this 1 by 2ab over 2ab which then allows me to rewrite it as 2ab plus a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab in the first set of parentheses. I can do the same thing here for this one and rewrite it as 2ab over 2ab and then I can combine these fractions together as well. Notice again because I have a subtraction sign here I have to put the subtraction outside of the whole parentheses and then distribute that value through. Since we did addition in the first set of parentheses, this expression doesn't change at all in the numerator. But then because we have this negative 1 in the second set, I have to distribute that value through. So I end up getting 2ab minus a squared minus b squared plus c squared all over 2ab. And now that I have these two, fractional factors, I can multiply them together. And when doing so, I'm going to end up getting 4a squared b squared in the denominator. And my numerator is just going to be this factor times this factor for now. Okay. And then the next thing we can do is we can actually regroup these values together. Notice we have, when we rewrite, we can rewrite it as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus c squared. So we just rearrange these two, like flipped them back and forth. And over here, we brought c squared to the front minus a squared plus 2ab minus b squared. And then from there, I can group them together. And when I group them together here, because there's a subtraction sign out in front, I have to factor out a negative from all of these terms. So when I pull that negative out, I get a positive a squared minus a 2ab plus a b squared in the set of parentheses directly below it. And again, our denominator is still for a squared b squared. And now notice I can rewrite each set of these as um, a perfect square factor. This first one's going to be a plus b quantity squared, and this one's going to be a minus b quantity squared. Again, over 4a squared b squared. And if you notice now, we have a difference of squares in both cases. So I have this factor squared minus this factor squared. So I can rewrite that as the first factor, a plus b plus c. 
and then I can write it as the factor a plus b minus c. So that's how I'm getting both of these terms here and here is factoring this. And then if we factor the next set, this is going to be c plus the quantity a minus b and c minus the quantity a minus b for this one. And this is just doing difference of squares um, to expand it out. So we have found that sine squared of c is equal to the quantity a plus b plus c times the factor of the quantity a plus b minus c. Close that factor. The next factor is c plus the quantity a minus b times the factor of c minus the quantity a minus b. So now what we need to do is we need to take away the parentheses and whenever possible distribute the positive or negative through. In this one, because there's no negative factor in front, I can just drop it. Similar with this one, so it's just going to be a plus b plus c and then a plus b minus c. Then we're going to have c plus a minus b, but then here I have a negative 1, so I have to distribute that through and I'm going to end up getting c minus a plus b for the last factor. And then if I rearrange my factors to always have the addition signs first, or the addition operation first, it'll end up turning into this expression. We have a plus b plus c, and then a plus b minus c, c plus a minus b, and then in this one we just reorganized it and wrote b plus c minus a. And then if I take the square root of both sides, That means taking the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. The bottom comes out nice to become 2ab. Then the top we just keep inside of the radical. So we found that the sine of c is equal to the square root of the quantity a plus b plus c times the quantity a plus b minus c times the quantity c plus a minus b times the quantity b plus c minus a all over 2ab. Well, we know that the area of any triangle is one half AB times the sine of C. If I substitute this entire expression in for sine of C, I end up getting this equation, one half AB times this whole thing that we brought down. And if you notice, I have an AB in both the numerator and the denominator, so these guys go away. And then I can pull this two out as an extra one half, and one half times one half is one fourth. So now I have one fourth times the quantity a plus b plus c times the quantity a plus b minus c times the quantity c plus a minus b times the quantity b plus c minus a. Now we can see in the first set of parentheses we have a plus b plus c. Well, that's the same as the perimeter. Is there a way to convert these other sets of parentheses to also include a perimeter? We actually can. We just need to make sure that we balance the expression every time we do it. So in this one we have a minus c. Well, that's at the end, so we have a plus b minus c. That would be equivalent to a plus b plus c minus 2c. And in the next one, if I add an extra b in there, I have to subtract out an extra b. And in the last one, I had b plus c with a minus a, so if I add a, it'll be minus 2a. So we're just balancing each of these expressions to make them still equivalent but then we're trying to get a perimeter in each of these. And now that I have the perimeter, which is the sum of all the sides of a triangle, a plus b plus c, I can substitute p in wherever I see an a plus b plus c in my 
equation. So now we have that the area is equal to 1 fourth times the square root of the perimeter times perimeter minus 2a times perimeter minus 2b times perimeter minus 2c. So we found that the area formula is equal to 1 fourth times the square root of the perimeter times the quantity perimeter minus 2a times the quantity perimeter minus 2b times the quantity perimeter minus 2c. Since we have 1 fourth that's outside of the square root, I can bring it into the square root by squaring it. So I can rewrite this as area is equal to the square root of 1 16th, because again, if I was to pull 1 16th out, like take the square root of it, it would be 1 fourth. So I know that this is true. And then again, I have all of these just rewritten. And then 16 is equivalent to 2 to the fourth power. So I can rewrite each of these terms as a fraction over 2. So p over 2 times p minus 2a over 2 times p minus 2b over 2 times p minus 2c over 2. And then I can split up my fractions and rewrite each of these like as p over 2 minus 2a over 2, p over 2 minus 2b over 2 and p over 2 minus 2c over 2. And then the 2s would cancel out with each of the constant terms, or I'm sorry, each of the coefficient terms. But we would have the p over 2 and then minus a, p over 2 minus b times p over 2 minus c. And then we know that p over 2 is equal to the semi-perimeter, or lowercase s. So wherever I see a p over 2, I can substitute it in with an s value. And that's how we get Heron's area formula. We also have an alternative algebraic derivation of Heron's area formula found in our appendix. Now that we've derived Heron's area formula, let's use it to calculate the area of triangle ABC. First, we need to calculate the semi-perimeter, which is A plus B plus C over 2. So lowercase a is the side across from angle a, so let's label all these. The side across from angle b is little b, and the side across from angle c is little c. So that would be 5 plus 7 plus 10 divided by 2. That would be 22 over 2, which is 11. So our semi-perimeter is going to be 11. So now we're going to substitute it into our area formula wherever there's an s. So the area is equal to the square root of 11 times 11 minus 5, which is a, times 11 minus b, which is 7, times 11 minus c, which is 10. And when we simplify all of those, we get 11 times 6 times 4 times 1. So that's going to be 2 times the square root of 66, or about 16.25 square units. Let's calculate the area of triangle ABC with Heron's area. If you remember that Heron's area formula is the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. And that s is equal to the semi-perimeter, which is a plus b plus c all over 2. Let's start by calculating our s value. So our a value is 11, our b value is 6, and our c value is 9. Again, they're across from the angles with those sides. So we have 11 plus 6 plus 9 all over 2. And when we calculate that value, we're going to have 17 and 9, which is 26 over 2, which is 13. And now let's substitute our s value with the a, b, and c values into our area formula. So we have that the area is equal to the square root of 13 times 13 minus 11 times 13 minus 6 times 13 minus 9. And that's going to be equivalent to the square root of 13 times 2 times 7 times 4. 
and that's going to be 2 times the square root of 182 and if we put this into a calculator switch to it um, 2 times the square root of 182 equals and we're also going to just double check we'll do the square root of in parentheses 13 times 2 times 7 times 4 and we get the same value so our answer is 26.98 26.98 square units. And this slide here confirms the work that we just did by calculating the semi-perimeter to be 13 and then the area to be the square root of 13 times 7 times 4 times 2 which is approximately equal to 26.98 square units.